What's up, Hobby Maniacs? Rob Bear here today with another hobby feature. Today's video is on tips and tricks for photographing your miniatures. Make sure you stay in the trenches, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and check out the blog, spikybitsblog.com. But definitely be sure to head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content and early access videos. Become a veteran of the long war today. So like I was saying, today's video is on basically how to photograph your miniatures. It seems to be like the last mystical art out there, like next to how to airbrush, and how to actually take great looking pictures of your miniatures. Cause you know, you see people's pictures all up in the internet and sometimes you know, they're not that great and sometimes they're really good. And it turns out you don't really have to have a, a photo studio at your house to take great looking pictures, I feel like. So I'm gonna show you a few tips and tricks and you're actually gonna probably be really surprised how easy it is and how little stuff you, you may not even have to buy anything. You may just have this stuff laying around your, ha your house to begin with. Obviously, if you own some sort of, you know, miniature painting studio or some, you know, something more fancy, th this stuff might not be for you. You might learn a few things, but I can tell you what, one of the tricks I use in here is definitely how I take a lot of my pictures uh, when I go to events now, you know, big 40K tournaments and such, and I get all these pictures uh, for the blog itself. So sometimes, you know, it's good to have a few tricks instead of carrying around a whole bunch of equipment and tripods. You can see my tripod back there in, in the, the photograph or the, in the video, in the background here. And uh, you know what? Trying to fly with that thing's, uh, it's a little, it's a little crazy sometimes. So check out the video. You know, there's a lot of good tips in here. Leave some comments if you had any other, you know, even even stuff to add like, hey, I do this and I find this works really well, right? So it's always good if we come together, we get all these ideas out in the open. So definitely leave some comments if you have anything to add, you know, some tips and tricks of your very own. Of course, I've, uh, you know, I've got a, a few things going here and there with studios and things like that. But, you know, we're always down to have more input and more sharing of ideas because that's what makes this hobby great. All right, so here it is, my little basic photo studio, so to speak, that I kind of put together over the few over the years I've been doing this. So first off, I got a couple of IKEA lamps right there, and then as I pan up, you can kind of see the um, basic garage kind of lamps. They call these, I think, they're clamp, clamp lamps. You can get them for like eight bucks each at Lowe's. Very cheap and affordable. Then I've got some tissue paper that I just took rubber bands and secured around it. Now, granted. Not exactly the best idea. These are fluorescent lamps, so they don't put off as much heat. However, <laughs> they still could catch on fire. So never leave these things on when you're not in the room. Obviously, it is a hazard. There is a little bit of clearance. I haven't had a problem yet, but it is something to be aware of. But then again, you know, it's only a piece of tissue paper that you might spend like a dollar on instead of, you know, all these fancy, schmancy, you know, photographic equipment. So if you're trying to just take pictures of miniatures on the fly and on the cheap, this is definitely the way to go. So you can get your clamp lamps at Lowe's or Home Depot for like six, eight bucks each. You can get these lamps right here, which also have fluorescent bulbs. I believe they're called uh, cool bulbs that you can get. These are from Ikea. They clamp right onto the desk. Um, as far as backdrops goes, really you could just use a sheet of notebook paper. It doesn't take anything fancy. If you have, you know, if you have some lamps and things like this and you want to get down and you want to get right over top and start getting some different lighting angles, you can definitely do that. Like say you have a miniature right there, that gives you more than sufficient enough light to get in there and take a picture. Now, if you have a sheet of paper and it's curved, you have something behind it, it's very easy to do. Now granted, I don't do a lot of singular miniature photography, so you know, that really isn't the thing for me. But, you know, for some people out there, a sheet of notebook paper and a couple of lights is super easy to do. Now, if you're looking for something, now these are also really great work lights that if you pull up this, um, this mat here, it's a great surface for, um, for also working on models. But say you want to take some really good pictures of some larger things, you're going to want to go with these diffusion, um, basically the, the, the paper over the filters here and you're going to take, you're basically going to diffuse the light coming out of here. So you can take pictures of, of much bigger items, which, uh, you know, will basically go right in here. So that being said, 
uh, I want to show you basically another trick you can do if you're not willing to use the star field because the star field really isn't, I use it for a lot of things like unboxings and things like that. It isn't exactly the greatest for taking pictures of miniatures. And here's another alternative. You just basically grab a black sheet from Walmart. I think this cost me like eight, eight or ten dollars. And I basically hang it up by using magnets on these metal rails right here. But you could use any sort of, you can even nail it into a wall with some, with some finishing nails or something like that. But what that does is get you this nice black background, depending on what you're trying to take photographs of. Now, contrast wise, sometimes miniatures show up better on a black background. Um, where you can manipulate them in Photoshop, whether you're trying to do that or not. Some of the studio, some some painting studios out there do that. Some painting studios don't. For most people, just taking pictures of the miniatures, you can just use a normal setup of a white sheet of paper, like we were talking about earlier. This is the basic setup I was talking about. You just grab a sheet of printer paper, um, some sort of thing to brace it on the back here. I just grab some gloves I use for airbrushing, a couple pots of paints to put in a corner to keep it stable, and then of course the miniature that you're gonna. Uh, you that you want to take a picture of now you can kind of tell there that there's uh, you know there's some really good looking shadows uh, you got a you got a nice down shadow here and also a shadow from the front if you want to get really crazy with it because good lighting is always key you can kind of angle this down and then take your other light and kind of go down like this conversely of course you can turn these off if you have a larger item and turn on those fluorescent overhead lights with um, that are you know, definitely getting diffused by uh, the paper, the tissue paper that's over top of them. But that, that really is only going to be a thing for larger items. For smaller stuff like this, you can just use a couple of uh, for fluorescent lights right here. Um, or even, you know, if you just take, if you just go out to the living room, grab a lamp, take the lampshade off of it, put it right in front, right here, um, right over top of your camera, you can get a really good looking picture as well. Speaking of camera, you're probably like, hey, Robbie B, um, I just want to take a picture of my miniatures. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money. What, you know, what do you got for me? Well, funny story. So obviously, you know, um, I have a very good high-grade camera here. It's a, uh, it's a Canon, um, I don't even know, like SLR kind of uh, thing. It's not like the super crazy ones that are out there, but it's a, it's a pretty decent one. Oh, there's a video webcam that I've uh, been looking for for like, you know, six months that I didn't know was in here. Okay, so anywho, so you got this, uh, you got this whole setup here that I used to take around to, um, you know, to Adepticon and things like that. I spent a lot of money on it, maybe like a thousand dollars or so. Apparently the cats are, uh, oh, I left food out on my desk, so that's uh, that's always good. The cats are going to battle for that. Anywho, so I got the whole setup here. I got lots of lenses and all sorts of uh, fancy things, you know, for traveling out of town, going to events, taking, you know, all these tight pictures of the, you know, armies on parade things that you see out there. And, uh, you know, it was always like an effort to, to, you know, you take an extra camera, you do all sorts of things. Well, let me tell you what I've discovered works the best and travels super amazing. Here it is right here, my new camera, the iPad Air 2. I know you're probably like, wait, what? <laughs> seriously? Yes, seriously. The iPod Air or the iPad Air 2 and also if you have an iPhone 6, the photo the photo software on these things is bananas. Like way better than any camera out there on the market today. So, like, literally, you have one of the best cameras probably in your pocket to take pictures of things that um, <laughs> that anybody, you know, like I said, I have a Canon, I don't even know what it is, I spent way too much money on it, I, I haven't used it in a year and a half since I discovered that I can literally just take my iPad, walk around at events, all of, the, all of my pictures from Adepticon, from ATCs this year, were all using the iPad, so it's quite amazing um, that that actually is the case, and I got this nifty little, like, um, Belkin stand here so I can also blog but what's cool about it is that it also basically turns into a um, uh, you know basically a de facto tripod so I'm gonna take a couple pictures here of this model now what's cool about it is if it has a built-in you can probably see it there in the picture Let's zoom in a little bit you can probably see it there in the picture it's got a built-in contrast meter which is really interesting too because like you click here and you can bring down the contrast or bring up the contrast. So obviously it's on white. So I'm going to bring the contrast up a little bit. Take a picture. Boom. Kind of turn them around. 
Now keep in mind too, I'm kind of uh, blocking my own light. So, you gotta be really crazy with this. But right there you can kind of see what I'm what I'm doing. Let's zoom in. There we go, that's the money shot right there. And get the contrast down a little bit. Hold my breath like I'm shooting a gun. And take a look at some of the pictures. You always got to go back and check unless you have 100% steady. So there's a good picture of Drago. Pretty good resolution when you consider I just blew that up to the whole screen of the iPad itself. Now, you'll also notice if we get rid of this and we do it right there on the actual backdrop itself Let's zoom in a little bit and we'll just kind of get our lighting straight just like that do the same exact thing and where we have there it is so now you're going to see that the contrast is definitely, definitely a thing. Um, let's zoom, zoom in right here. So there we are. It looks super crazy blurry. I'm getting a little bit of focus, right? Bring it down, get that nice contrast. And boom. Pretty crazy picture. Now, you can adjust that, you know, in Photoshop and things, turn turn down your contrast, turn up your contrast. But, I mean, if you're just trying to take pictures of your miniatures, I mean, that, and, I'll, of course, I'll post this in the video um, here at some point, you know, in, inside here probably right now while I'm talking. Uh, I will actually post the picture I just took to show you how good it really is. And it's, you know, it's kind of crazy that the, the the iPad and you know the iPhone 6 starting with the iPhone 6 some some of the i5 or the iPhone 5s with the new uh, phone software also can do it but it's uh it's pretty crazy like how easy it really is to take good pictures these days so always you know I try to have a good backdrop whether it's you know the the sheet of notebook paper or the actual black background um, like you just saw and you know just get in there and take some good pictures work on your contrast work on your focus you know hold your breath if you if you don't have it steady um, you know having the the little iPod um, or iPad kind of um, case definitely helps kind of holding it at an angle but a lot of times you know you want to hold it with both hands and use your thumb to kind of take the picture if you have an iPhone then you know iPhones are super easy to take a picture you can get in there really nice really nice and easy alternatively to this whole setup you know you can just use a, a lamp off the kit off the kitchen off your living room just pull the light the lampshade off it you know and just kind of get in there but the key is to have a good backdrop have something that creates the good contrast whether you want to use the white sheet of paper or your black background and just have really good overall lighting I feel like you know as you start taking pictures of bigger and better things you know you can use these expensive light boxes and things out there but I mean realistically I just used a sheet a piece of notebook paper and you know basically the phone in my pocket uh, to take uh, pictures of, of my miniatures and then of course if you're taking it on your iPhone or your iPad you know you can immediately post it to your Facebook or you know a blog or something like that as well so it's crazy how just in the past like three or four years even even two years with the introduction of the new uh, I iOS software that it's really gotten that crazy now now granted I'm sure the galaxy phones I'm sure some of the Android stuff out there is just as good I really couldn't tell you because you know I have this I have them locked in a stupid iPhone but you know that being said it, it's kind of the standard so I'm sure a lot of you know a lot of you listening right now and watching um, are like holy crap that's super easy I can go try that but you know if you have if you have the Android uh, phones and things like that definitely try it out let me know drop it in the comments how easy it, how easy it was for you as well so um, that's about it for uh, you know my hobby feature on how to take pictures of your miniatures